Hey, and welcome to the HA Podcast. I'm Danny Sheriff, the host of this podcast, the founder of the HA Society, and an HA recovery coach who has walked wherever you currently are. This is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. I would love it if you could rate and review this podcast, five stars only, to help make this podcast easier for other women with HA to find it. And last thing, nothing from this show should be taken as medical advice. Please seek the advice of your physician. I know a question on your mind is, how long will recovery take me? And I know that because I get that question a lot. And it's tough because the timeline can be really unknown. And look, I can't give you a magic answer that's 100% accurate. But what I can do is ask you a whole lot of questions to understand things like what your lifestyle is, where your mindset's at, what have you already tried? What are you willing to try and not willing to try? And a lot more questions like that to determine a general range that you could expect. So I created a quiz to help get that answer to you because I was asking these types of questions to girls all the time. So I thought I'd make a quiz and it's called how long might it take to get my period back? <laughs> the quiz. So once you go through it and you answer the questions, it will give you not just a time range, but a quick description of how you might be feeling to help you connect with that answer and see and make sure, it, yes, like this fits, this feels good for me. And don't worry, these ranges don't have to be set in stone at all. The goal is to allow you to look at the range that came based on your answers and decide, you know, do I want to do this or do I want to speed this up? So once you get your range, you'll also get a few emails from me that week with some important tips that are specific to you to help you work through some of the roadblocks that could be slowing you down and in turn speed up your recovery time frame. So take the quiz now. Just head to quiz.thehasociety.com or find the link in the show notes and let's do this. That's quiz.thehasociety.com. Come. Hello. Okay. Today we're talking tips to eat more food without the stress of how to eat more food, right? Like eating more food during recovery can be really hard for some people, and I get that. And there's definitely people where it's like that's not a hard thing. No, straight up. Um, but for others, there's challenges involved. So I'm going to address those today and maybe every, maybe there's a little bit of something in this for everyone listening. So let us dive in, okay? I have seen every kind of challenge from like, I just cannot eat that much, I'm so full, to I cannot stop eating. I'm afraid that I'll never be able to stop eating. And that's okay. There's tactics that we can use to overcome each of those things till eventually they're not really tactics and they're more so... Um, you know, tools that have allowed you to balance out and have a much easier time consuming more food long term. So the first one is to balance your fat, carb and protein intake. So this is essentially balancing your blood sugar. First of all, you know, if you're eating a lot of fat, you're going to be full very early. Fat is a very satiating macronutrient. And although it's wonderful for helping us avoid serious hunger, by actually helping us to feel full when our goal is to eat more, having a heavy focus on fat is going to make things more challenging because you're going to be more satiated. So if you're pounding the nut butters and the nuts or eating a lot of cheese or dousing your food in tons and tons of oil and experiencing a struggle to eat enough food for recovery, backing off on the fats just a little bit and leading or heading over to a higher carbohydrate and protein intake will help. So don't stop your fat intake altogether. Just lighten up on it to ensure that you're able to add more carbohydrate and protein in. Fat can be um, you know, really important for the absorption, slow absorption of carbs. So if you're someone who feels like you're hungry all the time, that's a different thing. Um, 
and you might want to increase your fat intake because it will help to slow digestion, help you feel fuller for longer. So, you know, pick which one, which category you fall into. The second tip is to eat less frequently. So, many of us approach recovery with the common advice of snack constantly. But if constant snacking is actually making it impossible for you to eat full meals, back off of the snacks and focus on full meals that will fill you up. So just try that, um, see how it goes. Or maybe you need to eat more frequently. So of course, the counter to eating less frequently, you might have an easier time getting more food in if you eat more frequently through the day and eat smaller meals, right? So you might get filled up with a really big meal, breaking it down into smaller chunks for you might allow you to get more calories in. It's important here to know what works best for you. So it's okay to trial and error and you know try eating bigger meals and then try the smaller meals and see which one allows for you to uh, eat more frequently. And then you know if you don't feel like that's having a impact, you can head back to the first point we made of ensuring that your fat intake is balanced because maybe it's stopping you from eating you know more frequently or whatever it is for you. Okay, the fourth tip is to eat first thing in the morning. If there's one thing that living with a hard gainer, my husband, he's one of those guys who needs to eat and eat and eat in order to put on size. Um, you know, living with him has shown me that if you do not eat breakfast immediately in the morning, you will be too full when it comes to lunchtime. Then you have a, you end up having a late lunch, right? Because like you had you didn't have breakfast till like nine or ten, you were so full. Then you had lunch at like three, and now you're way too full to have dinner. And you're probably more likely to skip dessert or that evening snack if you need it. So have you ever noticed that when you eat earlier, yeah, you're ready to eat by like eleven? So if you have like a six a.m. breakfast, you're ready for lunch at like eleven a.m. This is great because it means that you could fit a whole bunch of snacks in or a full dessert or even an extra meal in simply because you started your day of eating early. Eat calorie dense ingredients. So this one may go without saying, but eating foods that are calorie dense is key. Food that is not helpful to eat in abundance during hypothalamic amenorrhea recovery is like fibrous, cruciferous vegetables like spinach and all the leafy greens, broccoli, asparagus, green beans. You should eat these, right? But we're past the point now of making them the base or foundation of your meal. Okay, cauliflower rice people? Calorie dense ingredients, in particular ones that actually provide sustenance and nutrients for your body, should include fats like oils, nuts, cheese, butter, full fat dairy. Should include protein like skin on chicken and fish, dark meat poultry, red meat, the pork chops, lamb, and any other meat that generally isn't 100% protein and zero fat. Those meats like shellfish and chicken breast are fine, but if you're trying to get more food, more calories in, and honestly, a more diverse array of my vitamins and minerals, it's not ideal and they take up the bulk of your meal, right? Carbs, okay? This needs to include carbs. <laughs> Vegetable, vegetables, like they technically fall into the carb category, but in the HA space, we tend to talk about them more specifically like grains. So bread, pasta, rice, all of that is great source, a great source of calories. The good thing about them is that they're typically high GI, which means that they will fill you up, but be out of your system soon enough to give you the space to eat some more food later. And then vegetables. Like I said, put aside the cauliflower rice and pick up the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, the beets, the turnips. We're looking for starch from our vegetables whenever we can. Don't forget to make them delicious with some butter and olive oil, right? We don't want to be avoiding the fats. So I think what you can see there with that particular point is that variety is key. If you're finding yourself eating a lot of one thing, you're maybe not getting enough of the other thing, which could result in increased satiation, meaning you don't want to eat as much. It could result in less calories than you think that you're getting 
it will very likely result in a nutrient deficiency of some kind just because the quality of our food in Western culture is just not that great. Okay, the next one for eating more, getting more nutrients in, more food, more calories in without the stress of needing to eat more, reducing your movement is an honorable mention. <laughs> the, the fact is that if you're still exercising a lot, you're expelling energy, which means you need more food. Just like you can be more financially secure if you curb your money spending, you can be more energy secure and require less food if you curb your activity. If you are staying active, you definitely need to implement these tips because you should be eating well to, well, you should be eating a lot more above the recommended maintenance calories for recovery. So if you're exercising, but you cannot get your head around 2,500 calories because bloody, I don't know, because no period now what said 2,500 calories. And so now you're stuck on that number, but you're also still eating a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, my bad. You're also still exercising a lot. Well, you know, no period now what also says don't exercise. So you can't pick and choose, right? A little bit of tough love here. You can't pick and choose what advice you wish to listen to and which you don't. If you are continuing to move your body, you probably need to eat more food. So if you are concerned about eating more food, try reducing your movement. Okay. <laughs> the next next tip, next tip for getting more food in with less stress, reduce Oh, sorry, purees and liquids. Sorry, I was about to repeat the same point. <laughs> more pureed food, more liquids, more easier to digest foods, right? Food that comes in a puree or liquid form will typically digest easier. Those of you who've lived in the diet space for a long time have probably heard the idea of don't drink your calories because it will make you hungry sooner. But on the same calories as a full meal. Interesting, right? So you could drink your calories and you'll fit more in. So right now is actually a great time to implement that strategy. A smoothie, a shake, a flavored drink. It could be a hit of calories that makes room. In What's better than Outback's limited time features? Enjoying them with your mates, obviously. There's bloomin' fried shrimp for Jessica. That is like so crispy. Espresso butter to spice up Henry's filet. Mmm, so bold, so juicy. And a smoked cinnamon pecan old-fashioned that'll make picky Pete's taste buds tingle. I'd order another round. At Outback, we've got something for everyone. So come in, relax and enjoy. Because good food is best with good mates. Come grab your table today at Outback Steakhouse. Your stomach sooner because it's not taking as much time and energy for your stomach to digest. It just kind of goes straight through you, right? Think of your metabolism. Your metabolism is the total... A cellular process that your body takes to function, right? It's, it's every ounce of of energy that requires your body to, to do an activity. So if you're eating hard to break down foods, like tons of cruciferous vegetables or whatever, generally eating food, right, it takes more energy for your body to digest it. So getting some liquids in that your body doesn't have to break down is going to require less energy and you're going to actually absorb more of the calories from it um, and faster have room in your stomach to be able to eat more sooner. And you can also use like smoothies, right? To get to get vegetables in. So if you're struggling because of all of the calorie dense foods that you're prioritizing, you could have a smoothie and like chuck some vegetables in and sort of get the calories and the vegetables and get, you know, you have your cake and eat it too, essentially. Okay, and the next tip for eating more food with less stress is ditch non-stick pans. <laughs> so if you're used to picking um, or like if you're used to cooking with non-stick and only a few oils or very little oil, it's time to change it up. Not only is it more delicious and going to pack more nutrition and calories into your meal, if you use something like a cast iron pan, for example, where like cooking with a cast iron pan can increase the iron level in your food. Cooking with non-stick pans is just not that great for you. And while we're at it, 
yeah, I recommend cooking with cast iron pans because many of us have got um, a recognized iron deficiency. So it can be a really helpful tool if that's something that you're working on um, right now during recovery to cook with uh, cast iron and ditch the nonstick pan because that's just not helping you. Xenoestrogen, exposure, endocrine disruption. We just like, we just don't need that. Okay. The HA Society is taking clients. Coach Ashley and I work one-on-one with HAers, as we call you, to help you figure out a plan and, of course, implement it and stay accountable. Whether you've worked with a health practitioner already and you just want to stay accountable and strategic with the plan that they've laid out for you, or you want to start from scratch looking at all the aspects of your recovery needs and to create a game plan to reach those needs, then we are definitely your girls. When you sign up to work one-on-one with one of us, we're going to go over your history, your biggest obstacles, ensure that we're taking into account your specific goals and start making a plan to reach them. So those goals could be getting your period back, could be getting pregnant, could be getting back to exercise or sport, or simply working on your mindset around your body image and long-term recovery. We also can teach you the fertility awareness method. So if you want to learn that so that you have the skills you need to go out into the world on your own without fear of getting HA again, we have got your back. So our coaching packages are either weekly or bi-weekly and only a month at a time commitment. So you're not paying tons and tons of money for five, six months. It's month to month, which is awesome. It makes perfect sense for period recovery, right? So... To learn about other women's experiences working with us and to apply for a coaching spot, plus ask any questions that you might have before getting started, just go to thehasociety.com forward slash coaching. The next tip to eat more without the stress is eat from a large plate or bowl, okay? So just eat, to eat a lot of food, you need a bowl or plate that can fit it all. So start using bigger ones to promote yourself having larger portions. Okay, I wanna take a moment to talk about like the whole budget thing, right? Mm -hmm. Eating a lot, but keeping it budget friendly. There's plenty of us listening who are in the fortunate situation where we have so much access to food that that's actually what's concerning you or just the concern around not being able to have access to food is not an issue for you but you know there are people out there where it is it is an issue to like literally just double the amount of food you eat and look some of y'all listening and i have done this too we have spent more on food in order to eat less right like a packet of pasta is way cheaper than a whole bunch of spaghetti squash or pre-done zoodles or low-calorie protein bars or whatever it is that you're eating that's actually more expensive than real food. So a lot of us have been there. And I want to acknowledge that. And I want to acknowledge that there's also some people who would like to keep this budget-friendly. <laughs> and I'm all about that now. So now that now that food is no longer like a I don't know, this this weird thing that has all this control over me and that I would spend any amount of money on to be able to eat without gaining weight. <laughs> now I am more conscious about like eating what's in season or just buying the thing that's cheaper or buying the like the cheaper leaner cut and learning how to cook with it because it's more it's more a more sustainable practice both financially and for the environment. So I have some food idea meal tips that are cheap to buy and cook in bulk and eat in abundance, but that also have a variety of um, vitamins, minerals, nutrients. So it kind of, they kind of check all of the boxes. These are just a couple like meal ideas that you can throw in. um, Yeah, that I think might help if this is something you struggle with. So I recommend like rice with chicken legs, sauteed greens, and like like a creamy sauce. So chicken legs, drumsticks are super cheap. You can always get a ton of them for just a few bucks. Uh, and they're really good, for like way more nutrient than the actual breasts. And then sauteed greens, by cooking them down, they become easier to digest. Some greens actually unlock 
high nutrient profile once cooked and you can saute them in olive oil or butter and just add like a creamy sauce that you find somewhere like a really yummy creamy dressing that goes good on rice or some sour cream or something and then rice is just super cheap as well so like th- this is just a really great meal it's almost like the classic bodybuilder meal but uh ha recovery style like the remix um a hugely popular one in my household is spaghetti bolognese pasta is super affordable if that's something you can have you can get it gluten-free it's just like a really it's delicious come on let's be real and so is ground beef or whatever you want to do ground veal ground lamb like these are typically uh, cheaper meat options and if you just cook it in with canned tomato or fresh tomato or a jar of pasta sauce if you're over in italy and you've got freezers full of it go to town and chuck in some onion garlic if you want to be um you know kind of wild and throw in some other vegetables it's just really easy to do that with whatever you find on season in season or on sale and so if you want to deviate from tradition it's one of the ones that's kind of easy to do with that um no one from italy hurt me for that statement but yeah high calorie easy to make in bulk lasts a few days in the fridge i love that option then there's curry right like a good uh, red curry or a green curry or an Indian curry. They've got a little bit of protein in there. You can use frozen vegetables if you don't want to use fresh vegetables. Um, rice, curry paste, cans of coconut milk. None of those things are really going to set you back too much. And you can make a whole bunch of it in bulk. Of course, sandwiches are a great option, right? Meat, if you eat meat, cheese, bread, butter, mayonnaise, whatever you want. What's not to love about a sandwich? So why can't you have a sandwich for dinner? <laughs> why not? Then fajitas, guys. So fajitas are protein. They're sautéed vegetables. They're tortillas. It's rice. It's guacamole. So it's great. Avocados are the bomb. Some sour cream. This is nothing but good calories, especially if you're making them at home. Um, you know, you can make them of a higher quality than a restaurant probably would. They're probably using vegetable oils and things to cook with. But yeah, make it at home. And you have a really great high calorie, nutrient dense, rather cheap to make meal. Okay, controversial one here, guys. Cobb salad. I know it's a salad, but I think a lot of us also know that salads can be pretty awesome and pretty high in calories, which we need and full of good stuff for you. So when you take one and you throw in a boiled egg and you throw in some olives and some cheese and some bacon and a creamy dressing, I really love, if you live in the States, the Tessame's um, Habanero Ranch. Oh my God, guys. If you get that, you will never, ever, you will put it on everything. Um, and then it, a Cobb salad just becomes bomb. So that's a great one. A lot of tastiness without the heaviness of like a hot meal. And then speaking of heavy hot meals, stew, right? Stew is always great because you can cook cheap cuts of meat with potatoes and carrots and onions that are all also vegetables that cost nothing and you can make them super in bulk and if you want to pair them with rice or pasta or noodles you can and that's really easy or some fresh bread so yeah no excuses guys there's like uh what seven meal ideas that are really quite cheap that are high in calorie that are easy to make Um, you can google recipes for any of those things I don't even do that I just make them on the fly so yeah I hope you like it I hope this was helpful a little bit different me these recommendations so if you like it if you like this kind of content please let me know I will keep making it I hope you have a really great day please um would you leave a review for this channel I keep forgetting I think it's mentioned in my outro but just in case it's not Uh, reviews really really help with the podcast they really help me to get not just more listeners but get more um sponsors for the show so that i can keep going so appreciate it if you would do that for me and yeah have a really good day see ya thank you so much for listening today guys please subscribe to the podcast and if you could head to itunes specifically and leave a rating or review that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with ha who are googling around to find the podcast 
really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women.